This time on Sports and Society, sports and life, students, athletes, and life skills. Most of what goes on in sport goes on off the playing field. It's about what you have on them in order to protect yourself. I was first raped violently. Well, you're finished. You'll never play football again. Obviously, shoe contracts were four or five hundred thousand dollars. Morals and ethics don't exist above and beyond the society that they're a part of. Nowadays, uh, kids are faced with the choice of uh, do you want a couple of million dollars or your college degree. Sport is a metaphor for what goes on in the real world. For some athletes, sport dominates their life. After all, sports can be fun, lucrative, help one's popularity, bring attention, make one special, and unfortunately, sports can play a role in diverting an athlete's attention from developing the skills they need when sports no longer fills their life. As educators, coaches, parents, and friends, we know that everyone goes through transitions. The transition from grade school to high school, on to college, on to careers in the professional ranks, and on to retirement. In the case of the athlete, that final transition to retirement for all but the very finest of our best athletes occurs when the athlete is still under 30 years of age. Since the odds for the high school athlete to make it to professional sports is less than one in a million, what should the athlete do? What should the parents do? What should the schools and colleges do to make sure that student athletes will be prepared when their athletic careers are over? Do those who work with athletes have a responsibility to help athletes transition from the sport world to the world where most of us live, where educational and social skills are the tickets to winning a successful life? These are some of the issues discussed at the summit, the first international conference on ethics and sports. Let's visit the summit and consider some of the ethical and management issues related to preparing athletes for the time when their sports competition days are over. Well, our society has been running a scam on our young people. Understand that folks been lying to you. Somebody has led you to believe that if you really get to where you can take it to the hoop, if you can really crash the boards, or if you can really zero in and catch the football in a crowd, or block and tackle, somebody's tried to influence you that if you can do those things that you'll then therefore be set for life. It's not true. It's a lie. And I'm so sorry. In order to be set for life, to have a quality of life that God gave you the privilege to earn, you've got to educate your mind. You must. And that's what we ought to be teaching you, not this stuff about sports. Sports is wonderful. It's fine. I've made my living at sports my whole life. But I've given my passion to young people because I love young people, and I've wanted everybody to understand that you must educate your mind. You must have a soul. You can't just play a sport. If you're fortunate enough to earn some money playing sports or earn a scholarship, that's wonderful. I hope you do. But you're going to be through playing sports and you're still going to be very young. You'll have a lot of years to live. Don't be caught up in the scam. The measurement of love in the sport of speed skating, pretty much six days a week. Um, about 10 to 10 and a half months out of the year, uh, on the average five hours a day, uh, and that's just the workout part of it. That doesn't take into account trying to get proper nutrition, proper sleep, um, you know, maybe going through rehab if you have an injury. I mean, you know, there's a lot of the travel, you know, international travel, jet lag, um, but you know, yeah, that's that's all part of it, but there's also the other part of, you know, yeah, travel and, you know, getting to see other parts of the country, um, other parts of the world, um, being with what was some of the best friends that I've ever had in my life. Uh, you know, there's a lot of part that comes to the happiness that I was able to get from the sport of speed skating. There are very tough moments in every human being's life. One thing you learn when you hopefully uh, progress and reach middle age, hopefully you've learned something. What I've learned is that everybody suffers. 
regardless of how much worldly accumulation or how many Super Bowl rings you might have, and I've got a drawer full of them, um, you find out that everybody goes through times that really test your soul and make you wonder if you can go on. For me, there have been plenty of them. Um, when I was a little fella, I was short and chubby, and I was the last one chosen. And I felt very inadequate on the playground. And uh, it sort of drove me. And I, and I had a, an obsession with succeeding in athletics. And that worked out. And I thought I had it made. I had just been the starting center for the Green Bay Packers in the first Super Bowl ever played. And I had started every game that year for that great team. And Coach Lombardi had to call me on the phone and tell me that he was getting rid of me, that I had not done well enough. Now that was a blow. And I thought my life was over, at least my career. But it wasn't. A few weeks later, I got a call from Don Shula. Then I had, to go, uh, had the privilege of going and playing for another legend. And my career went on and on many more years, even though I had thought it was over. And what I learned from Coach Lombardi is that I needed to put my heart and soul into my game more than I had. I needed to learn what I was doing. My mental mistakes while playing for the Packers cost me my career. And I just had not been tough enough. So what seemed like a very dark hour became something positive. I had to, to, to fight uh, what every other young person has to fight in order to make it as far as I did. And uh, the fact that I had my parents uh, helping me focus on, on my education and not allowing that to slip out of the picture, I think really uh, was a key for me. Um, for me, I, I had, uh, sometimes success can be a problem. I was in college and uh, there were two uh, professional basketball leagues. One of them was trying to get me to leave college. And I had to make a choice as to whether or not I wanted a couple of hundred thousand dollars or, or my college degree. Uh, for me, it was easy. Nowadays, uh, kids are faced with the choice of uh, do you want a couple of million dollars or your college degree. It, it's, the, the stakes have gone up. But uh, that, that was a difficult choice, and I'm glad I made the one that I did. If you have an education, if you get a good education, that's something that you have with you the rest of your entire life. Um, it's always there no matter what. And sure, there were times when I was in school that I didn't enjoy it or I didn't enjoy studying or, or I had my frustrations. Um, but I think the most important thing to realize is you try to get in there, you try to do the best job you can. Um, you know, maybe you're a student who normally gets C's on tests. Uh, I'm always someone who likes to think about doing things in a personal best way. You go out there, you do the best way you know how, the best job you can. Maybe your next test is a C plus. That's success. And don't forget it. I, I spend a lot of time talking with kids about education and about preparing for the future. And to the extent that we're talking about athletes, athletes need to understand that they can do two things at once. They can probably can do more than that, but they can certainly perform athletically and perform academically. In fact, um, it seems to me that the two complement each other and work well together. If you understand, if you don't have this belief that well, I can only do one or the other. It's not an either-or proposition. They will both go hand in hand. Those athletic careers are going to come to a screeching halt. And you have to be prepared to do something. Not only that, as an athlete, you have the opportunity to do so much more. Because simply being an athlete, people will listen to you. They will, they will give you the benefit of the doubt when you say something to at least listen. They may or may not agree after they've heard what you have to say, but you will be heard. And uh, that's, there's a lot of power in that. A, a, lot, of, uh, a lot of kids who, who don't get uh, parental support still can succeed. And uh, they've got to understand that knowledge is power. 
and uh, if they can educate themselves uh, in any way, in any meaningful way, they can be successful in life. Uh, they have to want knowledge and they have to make the sacrifice to get it, but it can be done and knowledge will take you a long, long way. I was recruiting once a great young high school player. I was the head coach at Georgia Tech and I walked in his house. I'm not going to call his name, <laughs> but I said, um, what do you want to do with your life? I always like to try to find out what, what the uh, young man wanted to major in or what maybe what his mom was telling him that she wanted him to study or the dad or just whatever I could learn. I said, what do you want to do with your, what do you really want? He said, what I really want is the car. I said, I beg your pardon? He said, I want the car. I said, he was just hitting me head on with the fact that he wanted me to do something that was illegal. And we both knew it. And I mean, here we sat in front of his preacher and his mom and his daddy and God and the assistant coach. And I mean, everybody's watching now. And all eyes turned to me. And I kind of sputtered around and said, well, I can't do that. And um, I'm just not going to do that. Well, a few weeks later, he comes to visit our school. And I knew somebody had offered him a car. I mean, I knew that, and I knew who it was. I just didn't know what to do about it, and I knew that I wasn't going to. And um, I just decided that I would try grandstand play. And I, you know, whether he reached over and choked me or threw me out the window, I just decided he was such a great player. I was going to take a chance. So I said, "So you really want the car?" He said, "That's right." So I said, "You're willing to sell yourself for four wheels and a shiny finish." Some things never change. I really thought he was going to hit me. His eyes flashed. I said, let me ask you something. Do you want to do something very ordinary with your life, or do you want to do something great? He said, I want to do something great. I said, well, you need to turn the car down then. You need to come here and help us win. And then when you've finished four years at this school, you can buy your own car, and you won't belong to some guy who bought you. He said, I'll think about that. So about a week later, I make a phone call and got a very wonderful surprise. He had decided to do just that. He turned the car down, came and did a phenomenal job. And almost to the day, four years later, I was walking by the building, our athletic building, and I heard this rumbling behind me. And I turned around. It was a beautiful, looked like about a $50,000 car. And I walked back there, and there's a huge arm hanging out and a big smile, and he says, thanks. And I said, don't thank me. You did it. He said, you're the one that made me think about it. And I said, now, who does the car belong to? He said, it belongs to me. And I said, and who do you belong to? He said, nobody. The commitment to sports excellence can overwhelm an athlete. It can make all other educational activities, which do not lead directly to sports success, seem to be a harmful distraction rather than the necessary steps in preparing for an inevitable stage of life, which is not that far away. Bill Curry, former collegiate head coach and presently the chief operating officer for the National Consortium on Academics and Sports, claims that society is perpetrating a scam on our youth by leading them to believe that professional sports is a realistic career path for most athletes. He believes that it is important for athletes to prepare for the challenges that inevitably come both inside and outside of sports and that each athlete must take responsibility for their own choices, for their own life. Bonnie Blair, five-time Olympic speed skating gold medalist, revealed the level of effort required to achieve world-class athletic skill. She noted that her parents tied her early athletic opportunity to her academic success. Successful lives are rarely accomplished without the help and cooperation of others. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, member of the ABA Hall of Fame and basketball legend, pointed out that everyone has to overcome obstacles in order to succeed, and that education makes it easier to overcome many of the obstacles that we are likely to confront. Minnesota Supreme Court Justice and NFL Hall of Fame member Alan Page emphasized that athletes can both succeed at academics as well as athletics, and he encourages them to study well because as athletes, they will have opportunities to have their voice heard. So Justice Page suggests that athletes should study well to ensure that the value of what they have to say is worth hearing.
But what are the values and the circumstances which the athletes, coaches, parents, and institutions need to provide to ensure that athletes will be prepared for life after sports? What are the management and ethical issues which must be addressed in order to prepare student athletes for life both within sports and outside of sports? Well, I, I, if I could change the way uh, kids were educated, I, I would absolutely uh, focus on uh, what education means over the long run. Uh, kids at, at an early age don't really see what it all means. They, they have to learn something that they, that they don't understand at that point, and they can't see how it fits in their life. And I think uh, a little bit of uh, just showing them what it means down the road to you to have an education, I think uh, that, that could really uh, make a difference because kids aren't stupid. Um, they just uh, at times are lazy, but uh, you know they're, they're not stupid, and they they will uh, eventually understand what it means. You know, sports was something that was very big within my whole family. Um, I'm the youngest of six kids. I followed my brothers and sisters' footsteps, and that's how I got into the sport of speed skating. But, you know, it was something we really did as a family, and um, maybe something that, that's not done as much today as it was back then. You know, and, and I think that that was another thing that we saw a lot within the sport of speed skating. It was all a lot of big families all coming together, and, you know, whether it was my dad who was always on the sidelines timing. Um, my mom always in the stands. Um, she didn't tend to get on skates as much as my dad did. My dad, you know, he'd go to practice. We skate around the the blocks and somebody moves them. You know, he puts them back. A mat falls down. He pick, You know, so they were always really there all the time. And, you know, it was something that really helped I think keep our family together and give our family something to do together that was an enjoyment for everyone. I, I think that it's a it's a really sad thing to see now that the, the whole element of sportsmanship and uh, caring about how you win has uh, been uh, almost eliminated uh, from American life. Uh, it's not being taught at the at the basic level where, where kids are entering into sports and uh, learning about uh, the sporting life. I think uh, we have to make a greater effort to, to get to kids and, and teach them why it's uh, right to win a certain way and why it's not right to win in other ways. Uh, if they don't know why, they, they will never ever uh, understand it. Uh, and they will take that attitude into their adult lives and uh, we see the consequences of that. I, I think one of the things, you know, when I was growing up within the sport of speed skating, um, before the success, during the success, and, you know, now what is after the success, I wanted to be somebody who gave back to the sport. I didn't want to be someone who, you know, just kind of took, took, took and left. Um, you know, I feel that I got so much out of the sport of speed skating. You know, yeah, I got five Olympic gold medals and a bronze, but I also learned so much along the way. And I feel that so many people were instrumental at being able to be there and be part of my success, um, that that was something that I wanted to give back. You know, you, you, you see Michael Jordan or Emmett Smith or whoever your favorite player is on TV and you see the wonderful things they do and how famous they are and so on. But what you don't see is how hard they worked at their sports. You also don't see all those hundreds and even thousands uh, who, who wanted just as badly as Emmett Smith did to become a professional football player and they weren't good enough or they got injured or for whatever reason they don't make it, that the odds of making it in the National Football League or the National Basketball Association or, or the Major League Baseball are, are very, very tiny. Um, and uh, what you have to do is, you know, follow your dreams, pursue your dreams, work hard because they're not going to come to you if you don't work hard, but you can't focus your entire life on that dream. You have to recognize it as a dream and in the meantime your goals are to work hard in school and so on. Because if, if you know you set your sights on making it to the NBA or the NFL and you don't make it, then what have you if you haven't done anything with, with uh, the rest of your life? You know, if your whole focus has been on sports alone, uh, 
what are you going to do, you know, to earn a living, you know, after if you only play a couple years and you haven't made enough money to retire on? Uh, but also, even if you made a lot of money, what are you going to do um, that will give you any kind of satisfaction comparable, commensurate with the kinds of satisfactions you got from your um, uh, from your athletic career? So for me, you know, I played professional football for five years. Uh, I was I was. Um, a marginal player, let's say. I was a backup center and special teams player for Kansas City for four years, and then I got cut by the Chiefs at the end of the first player strike in 74 and was uh, got an invitation to go up to Canada and played out a, uh, the season there, uh, and, then, and then was finished with football at age 26. But I was near the end of my PhD program at Stanford and football had always been temporary. It was something that continued to work out along the way, but um, I walked away not from, you know, a, a glorious career where the experience was, where I was sort of uh, haunted by memories of the touchdown I scored to win the Rose Bowl or something like that. I mean, I was an offensive lineman. Even even as a second team All-American and as a center at, 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 and offensive captain at Notre Dame, I, I didn't have, you know, memories of stardom. I had memories of working hard and, you know, slugging it out in the trenches and so on. So it was easy for me. I mean, I was fortunate. Um, I could walk away and not look back. Uh, you know, my life did not peak uh, when I was 26 years old or 22 years old as a senior in college or 18 years old as a senior in high school. Uh, the th work I am doing now is more satisfying and more rewarding even than uh, playing football was when I was young. You know, I, when I think about sports and, and what I really learned from being within, involved in the sport of speed skating, there's a lot that comes with it and maybe a lot of it I didn't even realize at the time when I was doing it. it it's kind of like in school. If you wind up doing uh, your homework, um, you're hopefully going to be able to get those good grades. For me, it was if I did those workouts, hopefully I'll, I'd get the good results. And I think even once I started becoming a better athlete, having the success within the sport, I also wound up seeing that my schooling also improved. and maybe two things. My parents said I wouldn't go anywhere if I didn't get the good grades. You know, so that was kind of part of it. But I also think another part of it be came because I became more focused on what I was doing. My professional basketball career was certainly something that, to be very proud of and a, lo a lot of high highlights, you know, trips to the, to the White House and stuff like that. But, uh, you know, graduating from college and uh, seeing my kids graduate and uh, move on in life ha has been uh, uh, very significant for me. Few people enjoy change, especially when the change results in the end of doing what one loved to do. Should educational institutions be required to ensure that their athletes get an education, even when their athletes are not particularly interested in getting one themselves? Kareem believes that it is important for every student to thoroughly understand the real benefits of an education for a successful life, and that some of the practices that should be learned in sports, such as true sportsmanship, are actually life skills that will help student athletes long after their sports careers are over. Bonnie Blair emphasized the important role that her parents played in her long-term success and that she believes that she acquired important life skills through her experience in sports. Dr. Michael Oriard, distinguished professor of American literature and culture at Oregon State University, illustrated how academics and athletics can work together for professional athletes to achieve a successful life after a successful athletic career. Everyone goes through transitions in their lives. Athletes go through transitions which often challenges their sense of who they are, their way of life, including not only their activities, but the way in which they are treated by others. Ceasing to play sports often means leaving a team, leaving an organization, and developing another way of earning a living, finding friends, getting recognition, and defining oneself as a person. The ethical and management issues associated with transitioning athletes throughout their careers, within and outside of sports, are important. Athletes like all of us who undergo great changes in our personal lives beyond our control need personal, institutional, and perhaps societal assistance in making successful transitions to that next stage, which is always on the horizon in our lives.